Hi friends, very welcome to my Vanitar. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to build a variable double output power supply just by using an ordinary single output transformer. From this output terminal, we can get both positive and negative rays. For example, here I have adjusted the circuit to handle plus and minus 9 volts, and interestingly, just by using a single output transformer. Now I'm gonna increase the voltage level from 9 volts to 12 volts for both positive and negative rays. So if I turn this potentiometer, the positive rail voltage would increase. Just check the voltmeter screen. It goes to 12. That's good. And if we adjust the negative rail, so I turn this potentiometer, it goes to minus 10, 11, and minus 12. Really it's a nice tool for a variety of applications. As you can see, I have used many filtering components which are helpful to deliver a low noise output. So stay tuned, we're gonna build one of these together. So at this point I will briefly describe the schematic. The output of your AC transformer should be connected to the P1 connector. I used a 12 volt transformer. As you can see, one of the nice features of this design is using a simple single output transformer. Uh, otherwise you have to use a center tap 3 wires output transformer, which is of course more expensive. The AC input voltage gets rectified by D1 and D2. R1, R2, C1, and C1 to C6 are used to filter this input voltage. I can say the majority of input ripple and noises uh, are removed in this stage. IC1 and IC2 are adjustable voltage regulators. If you look at the part number LM317 and LM337, they are quite famous and many electronic designers know them. You can find them in many devices. So we have used them here also. By turning the R4 and R5 potentiometers, you can define the output voltage on the positive and negative rail. I selected this potentiometer to be multi-turn because it's easier to control and fine adjust the output voltage. D3 to D6 are protective diodes and C7 to C10 are used to reduce the regulator's output noises. As usual, I use the Symaxis component libraries for IC1 and IC2 for the three clear reasons. First, these libraries are free. Second, they follow industrial IPC footprint standards. And third, I won't miss any PCB prototype just because of my personal mistakes in making uh, component uh, footprint and schematic symbols from scratch. If you want to buy original components or check their prices, you can simply visit the component search engine.com and type that the component name here, for example, LM317. Wait for the results. You can buy directly from Moser and check the price or if you click here, you can check its availability and price from other distributors such as RS Components, Texas, as you can see, LCSC, Funnel and others. It's a real nice tool. As you can see, the top picture shows a 3D view of the PCB board and the bottom picture shows the PCB board. As you can see, it is a single layer board. Okay, this picture shows the assembled PCB board. The board has been fabricated by the PCBWay company. I got 10 boards at the same price. 
I had no problem whatsoever regarding the quality of the boards and soldering. Welcome to the test bench. As you can see, I have connected the transformer to the board and now I'm gonna measure the output noise. The first thing is that I should prepare the probe. So I remove this ground lead. Then let me remove the head. Then I should put this uh, ground spring on the probe. So let me find it in the probe package. Open this back and yeah, this is the spring. Can you see that? The ground spring and let me put it on the probe tip like this. Then I gonna put the probe on times one. Now I should prepare the oscilloscope. The probe has been connected to channel one so I select the channel one. The input type should be AC coupling and the bandwidth limit should be set on 20 MHz and the probe should be set on times one like this. From the acquire menu I should select the peak detect. Okay now the device is ready to measure the output noise. So let me put this probe on the output and check what we can see. Uh, now it should be okay okay so i want to see more details so change the volt division and trigger and, uh, put it on the center of the screen and 500 microvolts should be uh, should give more details okay as you can see the noise figure is quite good and the output noise is low. Of course under no load, but it's pretty handy to power your op amp dual supply operation amplifier using this circuit. Can you see the values here on the screen? Pretty nice. Okay friends, I hope you like this video. In the next video I will build a practical circuit using this power supply. Catch you next time.